Hi everybody, um, I said in my last video that I'd be back on Sunday with progress. Um, if you haven't seen that video, if you go to my blog, there's a, there'll be a link to it, I'll have linked to it. Um, so it was the lace cloth discussion around using them eventually when this piece is finished. When, if you don't know, just a quick recap. So there's two pieces of embroidery on paper here that I've joined together. Um, and then there's another piece here that will get joined on and I'm just going to keep going I don't have a size in mind or you know a finished dimension in, in mind But I'm thinking when it's done Backing it perhaps because it reminds even though it's paper. It reminds me of lace cloth that I make So I had some lace cloth in the last video and I was umming and ahhing about what to put on it And the last video will explain these so there's little snippets of fabric which are cigarette silks and that I've cut up and there's little tiny bits of paper that have been ripped from the same magazine as these on here and the ones on the other piece underneath and um, so I worked on this a little bit so I edged the silk velvet pieces with French knots and I attached these with just simple straight stitch um, stab stitch I call it um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the way the French knots outline makes them stand up like they're padded even though they're not But the jury's out on whether I'll use it to back this and I think perhaps it's a bit early to make that decision So I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm just going to go with it I'm going to continue working on these because these are my main focus. This will be in the back of my mind as a finish for the reverse um, But basically I'm going to keep going with these so I had these, this one, these two that are joined together marked down as finished, but now I'm not so sure. I've got pinned bits of stitch paper on here, there, and somewhere else, uh -uh, there, okay, that I haven't attached yet because I'm still not sure about those either. But I'm thinking, don't join any more together until the last act because I might have a brainwave and a light bulb moment that'll tell me you need to put this on them so and if it's really big I'm going to struggle to get to the centre and it can't be damp stretched because it's paper so I'll be worried about creasing it and stuff so I just thought I'd run you through that what I decided about that and it will make sense if you look at the last video and then I thought I'll do some little just a little titivation on here um, so you haven't come here for nothing bored growing a beard now what I particularly like on this one as well is something that I did just a tiny little area of a fringe um, with the thread colours that I've used in here so the silk velvet on this paper as well edged with French knots and in the centre of that silk velvet well not necessarily in the centre but in that space I've done some French knots in various colours so this is like a mini colour reference Okay, the little thing. So I'll do that, and you probably know how to do a fringe. Um, so turn off now, go and put the kettle on. So I've got six stranded floss here. Now, what I want to say is, you may know this, um, you may not, so I'll say it anyway, and if you know it, again, you can turn off now and go and put the kettle on. So it's six stranded embro embroidery for the floss. Pfft, can't get my words out, it's DMC. Now one of the best tips I was ever given was to separate every single strand before you use them. So if you need two, take two off. If you need three, take three off, then rejoin them. Now I need six, so I'm gonna take all six off. And it allows the thread to lie flat properly. It doesn't twist, it just gives a much more a professional finish, I guess. And I've got a knot in there. I've got a knot in there. I haven't done anything. Hey, I don't know. So separate them all. That's four. And rejoin them. Now, if I didn't use all of these and I wound them back on the card, when I came to use them next time, I would separate them again and rejoin them. Because by wrapping them on your card, you will be twisting them, even if you don't realise it. So that's three. Four. Now oh, this is quite a long... These are quite long strands, because I'm going to cut them up into smaller pieces for the fringe. Five. Six. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is fold it in half, 
and cut it and then fold it in half again and cut it again. So I've got four lots of six there to enable me to do four little fringe bits which won't be enough but I'll cut some more after. You'll find that it stays, I'm saying, you'll find it stays separated. I'm not so sure. Yeah, it does. So if I put them to one side, then you obviously, so you're going to be doubling this over to thread your needle. So you need a needle with a big eye. So I've got that. I fold it in half. Okay. Now I'm going to trim it so they're all the same length. Um, right. And I'm going to endeavour to thread my needle, which can be quite tricky with all these flyaway ends. Now if you have to spit on it, I don't mean spit on it, but I mean put it in your mouth to get a bit of saliva on it, I would always cut that off afterwards. Um, don't leave that in your work. You don't know what damage it can do further down the line. So there, thread your needle. Now, I had an idea where I was going to put these. I think I'll put them on here. This is a piece of paper that I pin took, use the pin tuck foot. So it's got ridges of machine stitch on here. So I'm just going to go on the top of that little ridge. Like that. You probably know how to fringe. You're thinking, you think I'm three. Pull it through. Oh. And then put your needle through the loop. And then pull it there. So you've got your first little fringe bit. So I'll cut that off, that tail. Don't want it that long. There. And I'll do another one. So I'll get one of my things of six. Double it over. Try and thread my needle. Nope, not quite. I try my very best to do it without having to put, without having to damp it. Sometimes it doesn't work. Um, but I would always, always, come on. <laughs> it's doing this on purpose. Come on, be good for mother. There, there, right, so again, next to this one, I'm coming through at the top. I've got a little line of stitch there. You probably can't see, but I have. So over the top of the stitch line, pull in a little bit, let's see. Oh, where are we? All right. Pull it through. And then put your needle through the loop. And pull it. Okay. And then cut that off. Same length there. So I think a row of those along there will add something really nice to this. Um, really nice little area of focus. I mean, it has see that one for some reason wants to flick up. I don't know why, um, which is very irritating. But I've got some more over here and they don't want to flick up. So maybe I've just got a bit of temperamental thread there. We're all allowed to be temperamental from time to time. So there. So I'll do some more along there and it will add some focus to there. And I still need to finish edging all these silk velvet areas with French knots and then stitching into them and like I've done here and here and here. Okay. 